Hey guys, this is the second part of the CNC video series. Sorry it took so long. Um, I will be better about posting quicker for the next builds though. In this video, I'll go over how I finished the gantry as well as the Z-axis with a floating head. Like before, there are free plans for this build down below in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. I started off by removing the gantry and adding the linear rails to it, making sure they were parallel to each other and parallel to the top. I lined them up and then marked where to drill and tap. After marking, I drilled and tapped and then bolted the linear rails on. Next, I started cutting the templates for the holes to mount the linear bearings as well as the motor mounts. After taping the templates to the CNC plates, I punched and drilled the holes. With the motor mount, I used the stepper motor as the template. On the two motor mounts, I tapped them instead of adding nuts on the back because I wanted to make sure there would be no interference with anything on the back. I screwed up where I drilled the holes for the bearing, so I had to plug weld the holes and re-drill. I then cut the linear rail for the Z-axis to size. When I bought the linear rail, I bought a link that was double the Z-axis length and just cut it in half. This was cheaper than buying two shorter links. I then repeated the process of marking, drilling, and tapping the holes. When bolting on the linear rails, I made sure they were parallel. Next, I tacked the tension mount as well as the motor mount. I used the paper templates to line things up. Using a magnet to hold the pieces, I checked squareness and that they were in the correct location. I tacked the Acme bearing mount. I then added the linear bearings to the whole assembly and checked to make sure it fit on the Ganshi's linear rails. I also checked to make sure the motor fit. One of the CNC bolt holes was too small, so I drilled it out. After checking that everything fit and worked, I welded the assembly. Because the linear rails run to the top, I made sure not to weld where they would fit against the plate. I also didn't weld the bolt holes for the top motor mount. Here you can see why I tapped them instead of just having a nut on the back. After welding the back plate, it was pretty warped, so I straightened it on my 20 ton press. This helped a lot. I then mounted the Z-axis linear rails. I next started on the Z-axis. The big plate is the main body of the Z-axis while the small plate is the torch mount with a floating head. I designed it where you can remove the torch mount plate to change tools. I intend on using a router with this machine as well. This way I can easily change this plate instead of changing the whole Z-axis backing plate. I bought a small linear rail and bearing to be used as the floating head. Again, using the paper templates, I marked and drilled the holes for the torch mount. I then added the stops. I 
I then tacked and welded. You can see how the floating head works. I then started working on the gear rack. First by cutting the rack down to be the length of the rails. I got the rack and pinions on McMaster car. They're five foot lengths. I then marked the center of the rack to drill the mounting holes. I then started drilling them. I used magnets to try and hold the rack on the side of the machine, as you can see. I wouldn't do this again, though. I would just use a clamp. You can see me struggle. The rack folded over to the front of the magnet. I had to reset the setup several times. The magnets worked well in theory, but in practice it was more of a hassle. After getting the rack and magnets stable, I checked to make sure the rack and stepper motor lined up properly and then marked and drilled the holes. I started off with a hand drill, but this made the holes very inaccurate so I switched to a mag drill. These holes had to be tapped as there is no easy way to add a nut to the back. I had drilled all the holes with the hand drill except one and so in the end the holes were too inaccurate that I had to redo them. You can see me struggling with the magnets again. <laughs> After re-drilling, I bolted the rack to the frame. I then started on the gantry, cutting the gear rack to size, and then grinding the edges. The magnet method on the gantry worked a lot better, so I was able to easily line the rack up, then mark, drill, and tap the holes. I really should have used the mag drill though, but I didn't. I would first start by drilling the end holes and then bolting the rack to then line up the middle holes. You can see here that the ends are bolted and I'm checking the alignment of the middle, as well as the motor is mounted to check that alignment too. I then tap some more. The bolt on the Y-axis tensioner plate is too large, so I had to grind the bolt head. You can see how it clears the gear rack now. I would use the other gear racks to mark the location of the holes on the other racks. I would then check to make sure the mark is centered widthwise. I repeat this whole process on the other side. I used the mag drill from the start on the other side, starting with a pilot hole and then drilling and tapping it. Next I bored the gears out. The stepper motor has a 10mm shaft and so I bought gears that were designed for 3 8 inch. 10mm in inches is 0 0.3937 while 3 8 is 0 0.375, so very close. I then marked the center of the gear shaft to drill and tap a hole for a set screw.
After drilling the holes, I tapped them and deburred them. Next, I started working on the placement of the Acme threaded rod. I used duct tape to line it up, though I would not recommend it. It didn't work very well, and I think I will have to go back and redo it. The weld on the bottom needed to be grinded to make room for the Acme bearing. I tried to center it up as much as I could, but again, the duct tape method just isn't that accurate. After marking holes for the Acme bearing, I used a template to transition those holes to the back side to then drill. After drilling, I then bolted and lined everything up. I then measured to get what length the Acme threaded rod needed to be and cut it to size. I had to drill the bearing mounting holes bigger to give me more wiggle room to make the threaded rod parallel with everything. Even with the bigger holes it wasn't enough so I plug welded the holes to re-drill. You can see me here trying to line everything up, making it as parallel as I can. With this time, I had the threaded rod attached to the motor and checked the fitment. Because I could only mark the holes on the top side, I had to create a paper template with the hole marks on it to transfer the location to the back side where I could actually drill the holes. After drilling it again, it fit better, though I still think I need to redo it as now it squeaks while using the Z-axis. I next started on the plate that attaches to the Acme nut. I just used some old scrap angle iron I had laying around. Again, using the paper templates to mark the holes for drilling. The scrap angle iron was too long, so I cut it down to size. Next, I drilled the holes on the backing plate as well as the angle iron piece. I tapped the holes on the angle iron piece. I then assembled the Z-axis. I also learned that you need to put the bearings on the linear rails before instead of trying to do it after. Otherwise, you'll end up looking for the small ball bearings and the linear bearings for 30 minutes as they pop out. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. I also will be posting the next video where I go over the slats and water table next week. Um, so stay tuned and thanks for watching.